Hey guys, so I decided to make a video on my science fair project and in my science fair project I am trying to teach a robot to learn forward locomotion or basically moving forward using three inputs. Now um, these inputs all have noise to them or three simulations actually, each with a different set of inputs. So these are the three simulations, each one with a different set of inputs. This one is motor one and two positions velocity and acceleration, and then uh, simulation three has a combination of both. Now, um, these labels here, they mean, uh, as you can see up here, 2.5K, which means 2.5 thousand steps, and one step is a quarter of a second, so uh, 2.5 thousand quarters of a second, and 12.5K, 250K with noise, and uh, noise means uh, just a set of random numbers between negative one to one. This will just act as like uh, nothing to it, just to distract it. And then 250k, which is the max training steps we, I allow. Now to uh, demonstrate what um, I've trained so far, I'll run simulation one. Everything here um, has been trained, and this is what my robot looks like in the virtual environment. I tried to model it as closely as possible in the uh, in the uh, like a physical environment or the real world because um, then I can get accurate results that are similar to this one. So here you can see the robots just kind of moving around and uh, learning, I guess. Well, not learning actually because they've already been trained, but um, this is how they uh, performed. Um, Apparently this one up here is doing a little bit better than the one that's been trained even more than that one. And this one here has been, uh, it's performing very similarly to the one next to it, which is the most optimal one in this scenario. This one here uh, doesn't really seem to be affected as much by the noise than uh, it would without be, without being affected. Um, and uh, this is the, the second simulation. With, which is velocity and acceleration as inputs. So uh, the way the inputs work is that um, it uh, the reinforcement learning algorithm uh, takes in the input of let's say motor one and two positions. Then it uh, it reads the motor positions and changes it according to what it needs to be in, what like how to move. So what that means is that. Um, Let's say the motors, the motor positions are way up here, like a straight line up, like that. Uh, the, in order to get re positive reward, you can see right here, it would have to move it to go down and pull itself forward. Uh, the positive reward um, lets it learn that going forward is a good thing, and if it gets negative reward, like uh, as demonstrated by this red stuff right here, it knows that it's not doing well, so it has to change its motor, posi motor positions to make it go forward. Here you can see that um, it's doing much better than the other one uh, here previously, and this is simulation number two. So it, as you can see, the noise definitely seemed to affect it a little bit more than in simulation one. And uh, for simulation three, which is a combination of both motor one and two positions and velocity and acceleration, th um, it's, it actually performed the best out of all of them, getting the highest reward towards the end at least. And uh, the noise, it didn't really have much, an effect, much of an effect on this than it did on, the, on simulation two, but it did slightly slow it down. So this is what it looks like when the robots are completely trained using these inputs, and uh, this is what it looks like when it uses all the inputs. These two robots up here aren't really seeming to do so well. Now in the end, um, the reward values are much higher in this one than they were in simulation 2 and 1. Um, but in the top three, the, the best performing simulations were uh, this simulation is number one, then simulation one is uh, number two, and simulation three performed the worst. This is probably because the motor one and two positions were more useful to the reinforcement learning algorithm than knowing its velocity and acceleration. However, when combining the two, 
it performed significantly better, um, but it did take a lot longer to learn in the beginning. What I mean by that is that uh, since these only had two inputs, they learned um, a viable walking sh or locomotion strategy much quicker than it did with this simulation. So now uh, I'll demonstrate what it looks like in the physical world or the real world um, using my robot that I made here. So this is the physical model of the robot you just saw earlier. I tried to model it as closely as possible, including the weight, the size, and shape. And um, you'll see it uh, run the first simulation. Uh, it's going to mimic the robots that you saw in the first simulation. Um, so there are four motors on this, one, two, three, and four. However, I'm only using these two, these two on this arm right here. This is because um, it can't turn this way yet or use its gripper. And um, this is the Bluetooth module. It receives uh, data to tell it wh um, what positions to change the motors in as an input. And um, it, as an output, it changes the motors. And this is an Arduino Nano hooked onto an input input output board, and uh, it has a standard five volt battery for power. And uh, this is what it looks like when it's running simulation number one. So this mimics the first robot um, that's performing 250,000 steps, and um, it's basically uh, it sends it uh, positions that uh, to set the motors in, and it changes it on this physical one. So yeah, so uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, goodbye.